Summary Mind to Matter, Dawson Church. Book link click here here is a summary of the praise for Mind to Matter. The book presents compelling scientific evidence that our thoughts directly impact the world. It shows how to harness this knowledge to more joyful and effective lives. Many science, medicine, psychology, and personal growth experts praise the book. John Gray, the author of Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, says if you have wondered whether your thoughts affect your life, this book will make you a believer. These insights can radically affect your health and prosperity, and I highly recommend you apply them in your life. Larry Dossi, MD says we have entered an era of healing in which the influence of consciousness in health and illness is being validated as never before. For a view of these crucial insights, researcher Dawson Church's Church's Mind to Matter is invaluable. Marcy Shimoff, the author of Happy for No Reason, says Dawson Church's Church's careful scientific work shows that the law of attraction isn't isn't just a metaphysical proposition, it is a scientific reality, as the boundaries of what you believe is possible for your life are stretched by Dawson's work they may never return to their old shape. Donna Eden, the author of Energy Medicine, says I love this book. It constantly fascinated me with delicious facts and so many captivating stories. Moreover, seeing science catching up with what the shamans and sages have always known is wonderful. The book presents a profoundly disruptive vision that shatters the scientific paradigm, refocuses the entire way we see the world, and opens up vast new horizons of human potential. It's it is one of the most important books ever written and filled with mind-blowing research that has completely changed the way I approach my life. It provides a blueprint for experts and non-professionals looking for effective healing strategies and makes a compelling case that the mind-slash-body link is more profound than we ever suspected. In summary, the many endorsements paint a picture of a book that provides a revolutionary yet scientifically grounded understanding of the power of the mind and thought to shape our reality. New research in quantum physics, neuroscience and epigenetics shows that our mind and matter are deeply connected. Our thoughts and experiences can change our brains and body, signaling our genes in new ways. This can lead to healing and new life possibilities. By gaining knowledge and having experiences that embody that knowledge, we can transition from philosopher to initiate to master. We go from thinking to doing to being. Repeated practice and experience can lead to habits and skills that become automatic and subconscious, allowing us to master ideas and philosophies. The side effects of these efforts include healing, new opportunities and relationships, and mystical experiences. We can go from being victims of life to creators of our lives. The book Mind to Matter aims to show readers how powerful they can be by coherently organizing their thoughts and feelings. Readers are meant to understand the ideas intellectually and apply the practices consistently in their lives. The author, Dawson Church, is an impressive scientist dedicated to understanding human potential. He has conducted and published research on energy psychology and the effects of meditation. The book answers the connection between mind and matter and energy and matter. It aims to change how readers see the world and inspire them to achieve their potential. Science is seen as the new language of mysticism. Dawson Church wants readers to prove to themselves that their thoughts become matter. The key ideas are that we can achieve mastery and change our lives by gaining knowledge, having experiences, and practicing consistently. Mind and matter, thoughts and reality, are deeply interconnected. Science shows what is possible for human potential. The book aims to inspire readers to achieve this potential. The idea that thoughts can become things is popular but an oversimplification. There are limits to what our minds can create. The author seeks to explore the middle ground between what we can and cannot manifest with our thoughts. Science and metaphysics are often seen as opposites, but the author sees them as illuminating each other. Discoveries in various fields show how profoundly creative our thoughts can be. The author shares a story of losing his keys while snorkeling in Hawaii and imagining them drifting back to him. Against all odds, a boy found his keys in the water. Though logically, it could be chance, the author has had many similar experiences of unlikely events coming together. The author set out to determine if any scientific evidence links thoughts and physical manifestations. He found many links in the chain and evidence that while not proven, suggests the possibility. Recent research shows that our brains rewire based on thoughts and neural activity. Our thoughts and feelings trigger genetic expression, protein synthesis, and electromagnetic fields that can be measured. Quantum physics suggests that physical matter is composed of vibrating strings of energy. The closer we look at the matter, the more it appears to be pure energy. String theory requires 11 dimensions of space-time. Energy and consciousness are entwined. The evidence, while not conclusive, suggests the possibility that our consciousness and energy are profoundly creative in shaping our reality. The author seeks to connect the dots across disciplines to see how compelling the total evidence might be. 
Our understanding of the brain and mind has evolved dramatically since the 1970s. The brain is not fixed and unchanging. It is constantly changing, with neural connections forming and dissolving. The brain rewires itself based on how it is used. Neural pathways that are stimulated repeatedly grow more robust and thicker. Pathways that are rarely used start to break down. This is known as neural plasticity. The rewiring of neural pathways can happen quickly. The connections in a frequently used circuit can double in just an hour. After three weeks of disuse, the body starts breaking down unused pathways. As neural pathways strengthen with use, the brain regions responsible for those pathways gain mass. Studies show that London cab drivers rely heavily on spatial memory and have larger hippocampi. Musicians who play stringed instruments have a larger brain region that controls the fingers. We can take advantage of neural plasticity by learning new skills that exercise the brain, such as a new language, hobby, or job. At first, these activities are complex, but with practice, the brain rewires itself and becomes second nature. In summary, our brains constantly change in response to how we use them. By engaging in mental exercises and learning new skills, we can actively rewire our brains in ways that support our well-being and happiness. The brain's brain's capacity for change gives us the power to shape our brains, and thus shape our lives. Dancers and meditators have larger brain tissue volumes in areas responsible for memory, learning, and body awareness. The brain physically changes based on how the mind is used. Graham Phillips, a skeptical TV journalist, tested the effects of mindfulness meditation on his brain. After eight weeks of practice, MRI scans showed his hippocampus, involved in emotional regulation and memory, increased in volume by 22.8%. His brain also became more efficient, reaction times improved, and cognitive abilities increased. Better emotional regulation, fostered by meditation, helps you stay calm in stressful situations. It leads to greater resilience, compassion, and self-regulation. A study of preschoolers showed that those with better emotional regulation went on to have more successful lives. The parts of the brain that handle emotional regulation also manage working memory. When emotions are disturbed, working memory is impaired. Learning emotional regulation frees up these brain circuits. You have an everyday superpower. You signal your brain to create new neural connections with each thought. Deliberately directing your thoughts can build a brain habituated to positive experiences like love and peace. Your consciousness is reshaping your brain. Like software upgrades, you can reshape your brain through the deliberate practice of meditation and positive thinking. This allows you to thrive in life. In summary, your mind can change your brain for the better through the choices you make each day. Meditation and emotional regulation are tools you can use to build a brain focused on happiness, resilience, and success. Our smartphones and computers are upgraded constantly by changing the software and hardware. Similarly, we can upgrade our brain by changing our mindset and attitudes. Our brain generates tiny electrical currents, which produce energy fields. Medical devices like EEG and MRI can detect these energy fields. The brain's brain's energy fields interact with other forms of energy like light, electricity, and magnetism. The cells in our body act as antennae that can detect signals from energy fields. Microtubules in our cells can resonate with energy fields like antennae. The interaction between our body's body's energy and other external fields coordinates complex processes in the body. Our body's body's energy fields extend up to 5 yards from our body. When we are close to other people, our energy fields interact with each other, even if we do not communicate verbally. This is known as distant healing, where healers can influence a patient's patient's energy fields from far away. We can direct our consciousness to achieve desired outcomes. When we decide, our brain activates our body to take action. The world around us began first as thoughts in someone's someone's mind before becoming a material reality. We constantly interact with invisible energy fields to transmit information, like how wireless networks enable our communication devices. Our consciousness generates signals that propagate through our neural pathways and energy fields. These signals change depending on our mind's mind's content. Both local and distant healing is based on the ability to influence energy fields. Studies have shown that energy healing can have real effects. An experiment found that mice with mammary cancer could be healed using human energy fields alone. The implications are that the mind can directly influence matter through interactions with energy fields. By upgrading our minds, we can harness their latent healing potential. Researchers study the effects of chemicals on cancer tumors in mice. Without treatment, the mice typically die within 14 to 27 days. Ben would do an experiment treating mice with healing energy to see if it would slow the tumor growth. However, Ben lost interest in the experiment. Dave convinced Bill to experiment instead. 
Bill held cages of experimental mice for an hour daily to transmit healing energy. At first, the mice developed tumors as expected. However, around day 17, the tumors started disappearing. By day 28, the mice had recovered from the cancer. The results were replicated in follow-up experiments. The effect was more substantial with more mice and even affected control mice in a different building. Bill trained skeptical graduate students to do the healing. Their belief or skepticism did not affect the results. The most likely explanation is that energy fields were responsible for the healing. Many described feeling the heat in their hands during the healing. Distance did not matter. The mice could be affected whether the healer was present or distant. Other studies show that healers can affect human brain waves at a distance. Bill found similar results in healing humans. Tumors often disappeared, puzzling doctors. In one case, ovarian cysts and twisted fallopian tubes visible in one scan disappeared in the next, bewildering the doctors. Healing is a skill that can be learned. Energy medicine programs have trained many successful healers. Hundreds of studies show energy healing is effective for conditions like Alzheimer's Alzheimer's, cancer, diabetes, PTSD, and more. Consciousness and intention, working through energy fields, can produce significant changes in the material world. While healing effects may start small, they can scale up to affect entire societies through changes in key individuals. In summary, experiments show that energy healing, directed by consciousness and intention, can profoundly affect living systems at all levels of complexity. While the mechanism is not fully understood, the evidence clearly shows that mind and matter are deeply interconnected. Throughout history, individuals have questioned the status quo and worked to create change. Even in the face of long-standing social conditions, one person's person's mindset can influence and change society. The mind can influence matter at all levels, from the microscopic to the macroscopic. Individuals have changed their minds and gone on to shape the world. Josephine Baker helped revolutionize public health in New York City in the early 1900s. She helped eliminate diseases like typhoid fever and improved infant mortality rates. She tracked down typhoid Mary, an asymptomatic carrier of typhoid that infected many people through her cooking. Baker faced opposition but persisted and ultimately prevailed, improving health outcomes. Great social movements that produce massive change often start with just a few people and spread over time. An idea that starts in one mind can take over the world. The information and ideas we expose ourselves to every day shape our thinking. Successful authors focus on creating and producing information rather than consuming it. They allow information to flow from the inside out rather than the outside in. Most people are passive information consumers, while successful creators are active producers. The story of Delilah illustrates how we shape our realities by choosing where to focus our attention. Delilah focused on consuming negative news, which led to worry, stress, and unhappiness. While the news was objectively true, her focus on it created her stressful experience of the world. Our minds guide our brains to enhance the neural pathways we activate most often. In summary, our minds have immense power to shape our experiences, health, relationships, and society. We can positively influence the world by changing our thinking and focusing on what uplifts and inspires us. Individual mind change starts a ripple effect that can scale to massive social transformation. The chapter describes Ferdinand Magellan's Magellan's voyage worldwide in the early 1500s. Magellan's Magellan's fleet of five ships set sail from Spain in 1519. After losing some ships and men along the way, including Magellan himself, only one ship returned to Spain in 1522, completing the first circumnavigation of the globe. The voyage was made possible by the invention of the compass, which allowed ships to navigate by detecting Earth's Earth's magnetic field. A compass uses a magnetized needle that aligns with the magnetic north pole, enabling mariners to determine direction. The summary highlights how Magellan's Magellan's historic journey relied on understanding and utilizing the electromagnetic field surrounding the Earth. The chapter introduces energy and fields as essential building blocks of matter and physical reality. Electromagnetic fields surround all living beings and inanimate objects like crystals and rocks. Our bodies have electromagnetic fields that extend a few yards around us. Scientists have found that bees and other animals can sense electromagnetic fields to navigate and find food. Dolphins have specialized sensory organs that detect electrical fields. Electromagnetic fields create the shapes of molecules in our bodies. The fields cause molecules positively and negatively charged parts to attract or repel each other, folding the molecules into the right shape. In the early 1900s, Willem Einthoven invented the electrocardiogram to measure the human heart's electromagnetic field, despite other scientists' skepticism. His work inspired the study of electromagnetic fields from the brain and other body parts. 
Researcher Harold Saxton Burr studied how electromagnetic fields organize matter into living organisms. He found that the fields appear before the cells and provide a blueprint for development. He observed this in salamander eggs and mice. Burr found that the electromagnetic fields of women who developed uterine cancer differed from those of healthy women, even before the cancer was detectable. This showed that energy fields create matter, not the other way around. The properties of water illustrate how energy shapes matter. The same compound, H2O, can be liquid, water, solid, ice, or gas, steam, depending on the amount of energy. Energy directs how atoms and molecules assemble into different forms. Ancient philosophies like traditional Chinese medicine also recognize that energy, qi, shapes matter, blood. Energy is primary, and matter condenses around it. Energy underlies the material form that matter takes. For example, H2O can exist as water, ice, or vapor, depending on the amount of energy. Studies show that healing energy from practitioners can alter the molecular structure of water and improve the growth of plants and animals. For example, therapeutic touch altered the angle between hydrogen and oxygen atoms in water. Qigong master Sin Yan and other healers have also been shown to alter water at a distance. A woman named Adeline healed herself of cancer by surrounding herself with positive energy. She spent time in nature, visualized healing, improved her diet, meditated, read inspirational books and limited negative relationships. After nine months, her doctors could find no trace of cancer. Cymatics is the study of how sound frequencies affect matter. Ernst Kladny, an 18th century scientist, showed that different sound frequencies produce different patterns in substances like sand. Higher frequencies tend to produce more complex patterns. Modern devices like vibration generators and Kladney plates are used to demonstrate how energy organizes matter. In summary, energy profoundly affects the material form of matter. Both healing energy and sound frequencies can reorganize matter at the molecular level. By adjusting energy and vibration, we have the potential to influence our health and environment positively. Water can change its shape in response to sound vibrations and energy frequencies. When certain sounds are played, a stream of water can change from a round shape to a square shape or a spiral. Different music and frequencies also create different patterns in the water. A series of experiments in Germany found that water droplets take on a distinctive shape based on the person handling and squeezing them. Droplets from the same person look very similar, while droplets from different people look different. This suggests that a person's unique energy field impacts the water. An experiment by the Institute of Noetic Sciences found that focused intention from people in Tokyo impacted water samples in Petaluma, California. Water exposed to people's people's intentions formed more beautiful ice crystal shapes than control water. The human body is 70% water, responding to the vibrations and frequencies around it. Positive vibrations and intentions can bring the body into wellness, while discordant vibrations have the opposite effect. A case study describes how sound healing using tuning forks helped cure a man named Jim of alcoholism, heart palpitations, and anxiety. The treatments focused on balancing his energies, calming his spirit, strengthening his kidney energy, and breaking familial patterns. After treatment, Jim's Jim's palpitations disappeared, he felt calmer and stopped drinking. Energy flows along acupuncture meridians in the body, which has been mapped for thousands of years. Meridians can be found using a galvanometer which detects the low electrical resistance of acupoints along the meridians. Stimulating these acupoints helps energy to flow in the body. Methods like EFT use acupoints for healing. Emotional freedom techniques, EFT, is the most popular form of energy psychology. It has been used by over 20 million people worldwide. EFT stimulates acupoints on the body's spidies meridians by tapping them with their fingertips. This is why EFT is often called tapping. EFT has become popular because it is easy to learn, works quickly, and is effective. Over 100 clinical trials show it helps with depression, anxiety, and PTSD. EFT combines talk therapy with tapping on acupoints. It takes under a minute and usually reduces distress right away. Doctors often readily adopt EFT because they know stress contributes to disease. Some doctors have found that EFT resolves patient issues without further treatment. An example is Dr. Chuck Gapehart who saw a patient's patient's arm swelling from a flu shot go down after tapping. He said his medical training did not prepare him for this. World champion swimmer Tim Garden used EFT and energy medicine after being told there were no treatment options for his recurrent lymphoma. He went into remission and has stayed cancer-free for over four years. Research shows that energy builds matter. Energy fields surround us and change with intention and healing. The disease shows in the energy field first. Sound, observation, 
and intention also change matter. Energy healing research shows over 1,000 studies proving it helps with psychological and physical issues, including pain and autoimmunity. Although science once dismissed energy and mind as unrelated to matter, we now know that consciousness interacts with the physical world. Energy and the mind are involved in creating matter and health. Matter and energy are equivalent and interconvertible according to Einstein's Einstein's famous equation E equals mc2. Energy gives rise to matter. Our cells and bodies respond to changes in our energy fields. When we change our energy, our matter follows. We can choose a materialist approach to life by focusing on material solutions. Alternatively, we can take an energetic approach by shifting our energy, and our matter will follow. Working with energy frees us from the limitations of matter. We can tap into infinite possibilities not available through a materialist approach. By aligning with the infinite intelligence in the energy field, we open ourselves to creating entirely new lives. Our emotions organize our environment. Hans Berger studied how our emotions can be communicated over a distance. He discovered brain waves by measuring electrical activity in the brain. There are five fundamental brain waves, gamma, 40 to 100 hertz, associated with higher cognitive functions like learning, awareness, and compassion. Monks generating feelings of compassion produced high gamma waves. Beta, 12 to 40 hertz, associated with active thinking, focus, and concentration. It is divided into low beta, 12 to 15 hertz, and high beta, 15 to 40 hertz. High beta is linked to anxiety, stress, and negative emotions. Alpha, 8 to 12 hertz, associated with relaxation, creativity, and openness. It is produced during light meditation and daydreaming. Theta, 48 hertz, associated with dreams, deep relaxation, light sleep, and hypnosis. It is produced during deep meditation. Delta, 0.5 to 4 hertz, associated with deep, dreamless sleep. Brain waves are measured in cycles per second or hertz, Hz. Their amplitude refers to the size of the wave. Brain waves typically range from 10 to 100 microvolts in amplitude. Faster waves like gamma have lower amplitude. Our ability to think declines by up to 80% when starved of oxygen and nutrients. Beta waves, 12 to 25 hertz, are required for focused thinking and problem solving. Stress produces excess beta, especially over 25 hertz. Alpha waves, 8 to 12 hertz, represent an optimal state of relaxed alertness. Alpha links are conscious mind, beta, and subconscious mind, theta and delta. Theta waves, 4 to 8 hertz, are characteristic of dreaming, hypnosis, trance states, and creativity. Delta waves, 0 to 4 hertz, signify deep sleep and connection with the spiritual mind. The awakened mind pattern shows ample alpha linking high and low frequencies, little excess beta, and strong theta and delta. This signifies an integrated flow of consciousness. The mind mirrors Eeg machine, developed by Maxwell Cade, is designed to measure the awakened mind state. Cade found this pattern common in 4,000 people with spiritual practices. Eco meditation, a simple meditation method, consistently produces the awakened mind Eeg pattern. It uses tapping to release stress and cues relaxation through the body. A case study, Prem, an anxious computer programmer, gained access to creativity and well-being through eco-meditation. His ego show less beta, more alpha, and new gamma and delta waves. His stress hormones and heart rate declined while immunity increased. His outlook became more positive and empowered. The participant, Prem, practiced meditation during a workshop and quickly achieved a relaxed state. By the end of the workshop, he planned to make time to engage in creative pursuits like playing the guitar. When consciousness changes, brain waves change. Extreme emotions like love and fear produce different brain wave patterns. Fear activates a survival mode in the brain marked by high beta waves, while love activates more theta and delta waves and a connection between the conscious and subconscious mind. Emotions create neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, endorphins, oxytocin, and anandamide. These chemicals generate feelings of satisfaction, reward, pleasure, closeness, and bliss. Mystical experiences are also linked to changes in brain waves and neurotransmitters. A study of meditators from different traditions found that meditation produced higher delta and lower beta waves, indicating a sense of detachment from the self and connection to something greater. This mirrors the experiences of workshop participants who reported feelings of peace, detachment from the physical self, connection to something greater than themselves, encounters with symbolic guides, receiving symbolic gifts, feeling changed, and integrating their experiences. Mystical experiences across cultures share common characteristics, like a loss of self, feelings of oneness, communication beyond words,
peace, and detachment from the physical. The experiences of Indian saints like Tukaram and Ramakrishna resembled these characteristics and suggested similar brain wave patterns. According to theologian Houston Smith, mystical experiences appear consistent across time and culture. Those who have them often share their experiences with others, who may revere and honor them. Mystics from all religions point to a direct experience of oneness or unity. This transcends the specific beliefs and rituals of particular faiths. Mystics describe similar experiences across traditions. Neuroscience now allows us to see the brain activity associated with mystical experiences. Studies show characteristic changes in the right parietal lobe, which helps distinguish the self from others. Mystical experiences are linked to increased oxytocin, associated with bonding, and anandamide, linked to bliss. Meditators tend to have higher baseline levels of delta and theta brain waves. Some meditators in workshops show delta wave activity far outside the normal range. This is linked to experiences of connection with the universal, non-local mind. Many people report having had at least one transcendent experience of this kind. Powerful healing experiences are often accompanied by high theta wave activity. Theta synchronization has been observed between healers and clients during energy healing sessions. The case study of Annis, a doctor with fibromyalgia, illustrates how resolving emotional issues and shifting beliefs can lead to changes in health and mobility. During her therapy session, her pain and mobility improved dramatically. Her EEG shifted from high beta to increased alpha, gamma, and theta. EEG monitoring during therapy and healing sessions shows that as people release negative beliefs and emotions, their brain activity changes in characteristic ways. Stress and worry are linked to high beta. Relaxation, insight, and spiritual connection are linked to increased alpha, gamma, and theta. Consciousness changes at the level of mind and emotion, leading to changes in how the brain processes information. The author began painting at age 5 but gave it up after her mother ridiculed her first drawing. She did not paint again for 40 years. After beginning a meditation and tapping practice, she examined her core belief that she was no good at art. She took a watercolor class and found she had a natural talent for it. She began painting regularly, numbering each piece in the order she completed. After producing 8 paintings, a local gallery offered her a solo show if she could produce 36 pieces in 6 weeks. Though daunted by the deadline, she set up an assembly line technique using three easels, applying layers of paint as each section dried. She could hold a plan for three complex paintings at once. She met the deadline, held a successful first show, and was offered a show at City Hall. Though continuing to paint and exhibit, she switched to writing a book with her mentor, putting down her paintbrushes for good in the middle of her most significant, ambitious piece. Her brief art career showed her that her belief that she was untalented at art was false, though her passion moved on to writing. The key events are, giving up art at five due to her mother's mother's criticism. Challenging her core belief that she was terrible at art through meditation and tapping. Discovering a talent for watercolor painting and beginning to paint regularly. Being offered a solo show on short notice and using an assembly line technique to meet the deadline. Continuing to paint and exhibit successfully. Switching to writing a book with her mentor and giving up painting. Reflecting that her belief she was untalented at art was false, though her interests moved on. The themes are overcoming limiting beliefs through self-examination, discovering hidden talents, persistence, and ingenuity in the face of obstacles, moving on to new passions, and learning one's own beliefs are not always valid. The experience of having an art exhibit taught the author many lessons. One key lesson was that our core beliefs, often formed in childhood, are not necessarily true and can limit us. The author realized that she had internalized the belief that she was no good at art but pushing through that belief led to creative growth and opportunities. Challenging limiting beliefs can lead to tremendous personal growth. Our personalities and beliefs are not fixed. Although some traits remain stable, consistent effort and practice can change our beliefs and habits. Our thoughts and emotions are connected to others around us. When we communicate, our brains synchronize. Our energy fields also affect others, even from a distance. Emotions spread between people, a phenomenon known as emotional contagion. Positive and negative emotions can spread from person to person, often without conscious awareness. Our mirror neurons allow us to echo the emotions we observe in others. Babies and children are susceptible to the emotions of those around them. Their nervous systems are highly attuned to both the positive and negative emotions they observe in others. That covers the key highlights from the passage on how our beliefs, emotions, and connections with others shape our experiences. Let me know if you want me to explain anything in summary. Emotions are contagious and spread from person to person, like infectious diseases. This is known as emotional contagion. 
In a study in Framingham, Massachusetts, residents found that happiness spreads up to three degrees of separation through social networks. Unhappiness also spreads but to a lesser degree. Emotional contagion influences groups and organizations. An example is how a new executive infected an organization with negative emotions by spreading distrust and criticism of others. Once she was fired, the positive emotional tone was quickly restored. Emotional contagion operates on a massive scale through social networks and social media. A Facebook study found that emotions expressed on the platform influence the emotions of others. Instagram photos reflect the moods of those posting them. Depressed individuals post photos with darker, less colorful filters. Emotional contagion has been influencing societies for a long time. An example is Adolf Hitler's Hitler's rallies in the 1930s that spread hysteria and frenzied enthusiasm on a massive scale. In summary, emotions spread rapidly between individuals and through social networks. Positive and negative emotions are contagious, though positive emotions spread more strongly. Emotional contagion shapes relationships, groups, organizations, and even societies. Monitoring collective emotions is essential to understand trends and events. The Nuremberg rallies in Nazi Germany were huge propaganda events aimed at whipping up enthusiasm for the Nazi party. They featured emotional spectacles like marching bands, bonfires, and speeches to create a contagious emotional effect and make people passionate supporters of the Nazi cause. The American journalist William Shirer attended a rally in 1934 and described the crowd's almost religious fervor and crazed expressions. Like other episodes of mass hysteria, the rallies show how emotional contagion can spread dangerously through groups of people. Your body is constantly regenerating itself by replacing old cells with new ones. 810,000 cells in your body are replaced every second. 1 trillion new red blood cells are produced daily. Red blood cells carry oxygen and nutrients throughout your body. They circulate for about 4 months before being recycled. The lining of your digestive tract regenerates every 4 days. Your lung tissue regenerates every 8 days. 10% of your skeleton is replaced every year. Your brain is also constantly changing. It produces new neural cells and over 150 trillion neural connections. It replaces at least one neuron per second. The hippocampus, responsible for memory, is constantly reorganizing neural pathways. Some shrink while others grow. Organs like the liver can regenerate very quickly. Half a liver can regrow to full size in 8 weeks. The regeneration of cells occurs at different rates for different tissues. Some, like skin, regenerate very quickly, while others, like fat cells, regenerate slowly. What you eat and drink provides the raw materials for your body to regenerate cells. High-quality inputs lead to high-quality cells. Low-quality inputs lead to low-quality cells. The energy fields your body is exposed to also impact cell regeneration. Positive energy promotes healthy cell growth. Negative energy can damage cells. The story of Glenda Payne shows how focusing the mind on impacting cell regeneration positively can lead to healing even from a terminal disease. She overcame mitochondrial inclusion body myositis using techniques like EFD tapping and envisioning health. In summary, your body is continually renewing itself through cell regeneration. Both the matter and energy it is exposed to influence the quality of new cells produced. By providing high quality inputs and exposure to positive energy, you can support your body spitties innate capacity for healing and overcoming disease. The major issues the author and her friend Glenda had been dealing with their whole lives were severe chronic illnesses and disabilities. They chose to pursue energy healing certification to try and improve their health. In October, they enrolled in their first certification class with an energy healer named Dawson. He worked with the author in a demonstration, and by the end of the four-day workshop, she could drop her cane and dance, even though she had arrived in a wheelchair. Glenda has not used her scooter since that day. In the three years since first learning about energy healing, the author completed certification as an EFT practitioner and in energy psychology. She wrote and published a book and became initiated as a shaman. Though she still has good and bad days and needs much rest, she uses her cane less, can go on short hikes, and has learned to listen to her body. The happier and more positive she is, the more active she can be. Though the author only has a limited part-time practice, the people she works with motivate her to continue being kind to her body. When well-rested, she can be more available to clients and readers. She hopes her story will inspire others like Dr. Joe's Joe's story inspired her. The author believes mental and emotional states influence many cases of remission from serious diseases. When cells are bathed in positivity as they replicate, it shapes their development. Creating fields of love and kindness provides an energetic environment for health regeneration. Spontaneous remission of cancer was once considered very rare, 
but studies show it may be pretty standard, around 20% for some cancers. For those who experience it, a change in worldview and more altruism are standard. Stress hormones like adrenaline activate cancer cell spread, but lowering stress can reverse this. Tumors have shrunk within hours of emotional healing sessions. Energy healing researcher Bill Bankston helped a student named Lori to heal terminal breast cancer. Her tumors disappeared after two months of six days a week of treatment, though Bankston developed temporary alarming lumps himself. Lori has remained cancer-free for over 10 years. The author proposes that the invisible energies of positive emotions and kindness may bathe regenerating cells and shape them. When 810,000 new cells per second are in positive energy fields, they are shaped by it. Maintaining positive states for weeks means trillions of new cells are shaped this way. Research shows that specific energy frequencies stimulate cell regeneration and health. Cells are sensitive to narrow frequency bands or windows and respond to some but not all frequencies. The frequencies stimulating healthy cells are like those from brain activity and may directly affect cellular regeneration. A review of research found frequencies that stimulate nerve and synapse growth, repair spinal cord tissue, reduce Parkinson's Parkinson's symptoms, inhibit cancer, improve memory, synchronize brain firing, increase attention and wound healing, decrease inflammation, increase bone and connective tissue regeneration, increase stem cells, stimulate stem cell differentiation, enhance immunity, catalyze GH synthesis, regulate free radicals, and repair heart muscle. The biological markers scientists examine include gene expression, GH levels, telomeres, and stem cell numbers. These correlate with immunity and inflammation, and the goal is high immunity and low inflammation. Stem cells become specific cell types as needed for repair. Stem cells are undifferentiated cells that can turn into any cell. They are essential for healing and regeneration. Growth hormone repairs and regenerates cells. It is produced during sleep, especially during delta sleep. Higher levels of growth hormone are beneficial for health and vitality. Oxidative stress caused by free radicals damages cells and contributes to aging. Telomeres are end caps on chromosomes that shorten with each cell division. Telomerase is an enzyme that lengthens telomeres. Longer telomeres are a marker of slower biological aging. Stress causes faster shortening of telomeres. Brain waves like delta, theta, alpha, and gamma frequencies can affect cells and molecules. These brain waves increase with meditation and tapping. Delta waves, 0 to 4 hertz are the slowest brain waves. They are linked to increased growth hormone, memory enhancement, reduced Alzheimer's Alzheimer's plaques, increased telomerase, nerve cell regeneration, and feelings of connection. Theta waves, 4 to 8 hertz, are common in healers. They are linked to DNA repair, cartilage cell regeneration, increased serotonin, pain reduction, and stimulating DNA. Alpha waves, 8 to 12 hertz, are linked to increased melatonin, DHEA reduced cortisol, and increased growth hormone. They promote relaxation and creativity. Gamma waves, 40 Hz and higher, are the fastest brain waves. They are linked to improved memory, increased compassion, and decreased depression and anxiety. Gamma waves promote neural synchronization and cognitive functions. In summary, slower brain wave frequencies like delta and theta benefit physical healing and regeneration. Faster frequencies like gamma are beneficial for improved cognitive functions and mood. Meditation and tapping techniques can enhance these beneficial brain wave frequencies. Alpha brain waves oscillate between 8 to 13 Hz. Alpha waves connect our conscious and unconscious minds. Alpha waves are linked to increased serotonin, mood, and DNA synthesis. Meditation increases alpha waves. Beta waves range from 13 to 25 Hz. Low beta is associated with routine mental tasks. High beta is linked to stress, anxiety, and aging. Gamma waves start at 25 Hz and go up to 100 Hz. Gamma waves are associated with insight, cognition, and synchronizing of different brain regions. Exposing the brain to gamma waves reduced beta amyloid plaques in Alzheimer's Alzheimer's mice. Gamma stimulation improved Alzheimer's Alzheimer's symptoms in humans. Gamma waves are linked to anti-inflammatory effects, increased stem cell production, and regulation of stress genes. High beta suppresses cell growth, while gamma enhances cell growth. Our brain waves influence our cells and body. Altering our brain waves can promote health. Many spiritual practices like mindfulness, heart coherence, and meditation alter brain waves in beneficial ways. Eco meditation combines mindfulness, heart coherence, tapping, and neurofeedback to shift brain waves and support well being. Our brain waves significantly impact our bodies, health, and cells. 
By understanding this mind-body connection, we can use practices like meditation to shift our brain waves in a healthy direction. The passage describes a coaching session with Harold, who is dealing with high stress and recently lost hearing in one ear. Harold had a successful career at the UN but collapsed during a hostage negotiation due to high stress. Tests showed he lost 80% of hearing in his left ear. Harold attends a week-long training with the author to improve his health and decide whether to retire early. They assess his well-being and physiological profile before the training. During the coaching in front of the group, Harold shares his fears of aging, declining health, and becoming irrelevant. He's he is worried his hearing loss signals more physical decline. As Harold relaxes during the session, his brain waves show increased theta, delta, and alpha, indicating a shift from an anxious state of mind. The coaching helps Harold work through emotions from his health crisis and set new goals. Harold then realizes his hearing loss in the left ear has improved to only 15% loss. His belief in the doctor's doctor's diagnosis of 80% loss had clouded the improvement. Questioning his beliefs about the medical diagnosis helped Harold tune into the actual improvement in his hearing. The key takeaway is that Harold's Harold shift to a more relaxed state of mind, with different brain wave patterns, allowed him to let go of limiting beliefs and realize his hearing had significantly recovered. Tuning into his direct experience and intuition revealed the truth beyond the doctor's doctor's initial diagnosis. During eco-meditation retreats, participants learn to enter peak meditative states. They can evoke these states more quickly and stably with practice, even with open eyes. This helps change their brain's brain set point to a calm, balanced state. Studies show that EFD and other energy therapies can significantly reduce PTSD and other symptoms. They are also associated with beneficial changes in gene expression, such as decreased inflammation and increased immunity. A small study found that a single EFD session regulated 72 genes involved in functions like suppressing cancer, providing UV protection, regulating metabolism, and strengthening neural connections. About half the effects persisted the next day. Saliva samples from workshop participants showed that four days of intensive meditation resulted in significant upregulation of eight genes involved in neurogenesis, cell repair, tumor suppression, and other functions. EEG scans also showed substantial improvements in participants' brain states. Three of the genes upregulated, CHOC1, CTGF, and TUFT1, help identify and eliminate cancer cells. Two others, DO2 and C5ORF66AS1 also help regulate metabolism and suppress tumors. A sixth, KRT24, provides the cell structure and helps suppress certain cancer cell types. The results show that relatively short-term EFT, meditation, and similar practices can have significant and lasting impacts on the brain and the body at a genetic level. They highlight the potential of these approaches for healing and transformation. ALS2CL and RND1 are tumor suppressor genes that suppress colorectal cancer and certain types of head, neck and throat cancers. New research shows that mind-body interventions like EFD and meditation produce profound changes in the body by altering gene expression. Bryce Rogow is a former Marine who served in Iraq and suffered from PTSD. He found relief through eco-meditation, a simple seven-step meditation technique. Studies show that eco-meditation reduces cortisol, heart rate, depression, and anxiety while increasing immune function and happiness. Our thoughts and inner state powerfully impact our cells and genetics. Positive thoughts and lowered stress upregulate health-promoting genes, while negative thoughts and chronic stress do the opposite. We have thousands of thoughts daily, up to 80% repetitive and harmful. This constant mental chatter keeps us trapped in negativity and stress. Achieving a coherent mind state through meditation and mindfulness helps break this cycle. The source of much of our suffering is our evolutionary instinct to focus on threats and negative possibilities. This helped our distant ancestors survive, but today causes excessive anxiety, worry, and stress. Our brains evolved to default to a state of fear, beta brain waves, which kept our ancestors alert to dangers. Those optimistic and missed threats were less likely to survive and reproduce. The story of Hug and Goog illustrates this. Hug focused on the positive and was eaten by a tiger. Goog was paranoid and hypervigilant, spotted the threat, and survived to pass on her genes. Over generations, we evolved to have Goog's Goog's mindset. Even with no real threats, our brains continually scan the environment and our thoughts for possible dangers. This causes unnecessary stress and anxiety. The man at Home Depot who struggled to cut a key illustrates the tendency to perceive difficulties and obstacles even where there are none. Our minds are predisposed to failure and defeat. Caveman's brain refers to this evolutionary mechanism that focuses on threats. It helped our ancestors survive but now compromises our health and happiness.
Even mild anxiety increases the risk of death by 20%. The story of the monks and the woman illustrates how our thoughts can continue to stress us out long after an event has passed. Like the younger monk, we carry thoughts and ruminate in ways that raise cortisol and blood pressure. A study found that despite helping others, healthcare workers tend to be highly stressed. Their average stress scores were at a clinically significant level. Dapping was found to reduce symptoms of anxiety and depression in these workers significantly. In summary, the source of much of our suffering is our threat-focused minds, which served an essential purpose for our distant ancestors. We have inherited caveman brains that are killing us in the modern world. Managing this mindset and quelling excessive stress and worry is critical to well-being. Naomi Jansen suffered from depression for 18 months after a breakup. She felt trapped in a loop of negative thoughts and emotions, like being caught in a whirlpool. Standard advice to snap out of it did not help. EFT tapping helped her escape this loop. We have two main stress hormones, adrenaline, short-acting, and cortisol, long-acting. Cortisol rises and falls slowly over the day to regulate energy and wakefulness. Stress causes cortisol to spike, which is meant to be temporary. Chronic high cortisol has many damaging health effects, like high blood pressure, impaired memory, weight gain, and accelerated aging. Thoughts and emotions, not just physical threats, can raise cortisol. Our bodies react the same way to perceived threats as actual threats. We were ruminating about stressful events, even if imaginary, releasing cortisol. This can lead to chronic high cortisol, even after the stressor has passed. A study found that a single EFD tapping session lowered cortisol levels by 24% on average, showing effects on the body. One participant, Dean, had a 48% drop in cortisol after tapping, compared to a 40% rise after talk therapy. Tapping helped relieve his distress over losing the love of his life and a childhood memory. A week-long EFT workshop significantly improved mental and physiological health markers, especially stress hormones. EFT helps reset the body to a relaxed, balanced state even when faced with upsetting memories and thoughts. This demonstrates how powerfully our thoughts and emotions can affect our physical health and how techniques like EFT can have wide-ranging health benefits by addressing the mind and body together. In summary, Negative thought loops and high stress hormones like cortisol can have damaging long term effects. However, techniques that work with the mind body connection, such as EFT, show promise for restoring balance and well being. Our thoughts have real impacts on our health and biology. EFT helps break negative thought patterns and reset the body to undo harmful effects built up over time. A study found that five days of EFT tapping led to significant reductions in cortisol, 37%, increases in salivary immunoglobulin A. 113%, and decreases in resting heart rate, 8%, and blood pressure, 6%. These suggested significant decreases in stress and improvements in well-being. Health and mental health are closely connected. Techniques like EFT and meditation that reduce stress can improve both. Stress, relaxation, and other states exist on a continuum. They can increase or decrease gradually. Emotions and thoughts can move us along this continuum. When the brain is coherent, its electrical activity synchronizes, and neural groups fire together harmoniously. This state is associated with peak efficiency and performance. Incoherent brain activity is chaotic and inefficient. Like coherent laser light, a coherent mind is focused and powerful. An incoherent mind produces brain fog and impaired thinking. Stress quickly impairs cognitive abilities by reducing blood flow to the prefrontal cortex. A coherent mind can influence the four fundamental forces of physics, the strong and weak nuclear forces, electromagnetism, and gravity. Studies show that people in coherent states of mind can alter radioactive particles decay rates, which are usually highly stable. In one study, a Qigong master named Dr. Yatsen used projected qi energy to alter the decay rate of an americium-241 radioactive sample over eight sessions. He could slow or speed up decay compared to a control sample. This suggested the ability of a coherent mind to influence the weak nuclear force. In summary, stress reduction techniques like EFT help create a coherent state of mind associated with well-being, peak performance, and influence over fundamental physical forces. A coherent mind is a powerful mind. In 2002, researchers tested whether a Qigong master, Dr. Yan Sin, could affect the radioactive decay of an americium sample. Over 50 experiments, he decreased the decay rate by 11.3% and increased it by 9.5% during 20-minute trials. This effect occurred even when he was over 2,000 kilometers from the sample. Nuclear physicist Feng Lu said drive. Yan's results transformed the accepted view of the nature of the world by showing that human potential is more significant than previously thought.
Dr. Bill Bankston described tests in which healer Bennett Mayrick could speed up and slow down radioactive decay using mental imagery. The author conducted experiments and found that she and her wife could also affect radioactive decay rates using meditation and visualization. However, the author could only increase the rate, while her wife could only decrease it. These results suggest a fifth force that can alter two of the four fundamental forces of physics, electromagnetism and the weak nuclear force. Experiments found that healing intention could alter magnetic fields in mice. The ability to achieve results may depend on the experimenter and the environment. According to researcher Yuri Kron, scientists' energy can affect their experiments. Meditation or mental imagery may be required to achieve changes, as an ordinary state of mind did not produce effects. Multiple researchers and experimenters have found evidence that conscious intention, often meditation or visualization, can alter radioactive decay rates and electromagnetic fields. This points to a fifth force that can influence two of the four fundamental forces of physics, the experimenter state and environment seem to play a role in whether effects can be achieved. When our minds are calm and focused, our brain waves shift to slower frequencies like alpha, theta, and delta. In this meditative state, our intentions have more power to affect the material world. Researchers at the Institute of Heart Math have found that our heart rate becomes more coherent when we experience positive emotions like appreciation. This state of physiological coherence is linked to benefits like reduced cortisol, increased alpha brain waves, and synchronization between the heart and brain. An experiment found that people in a coherent state could change the structure of DNA with their intention. They could either wind or unwind the double helix of a DNA sample. This effect occurred both when the DNA was close by and half a mile away. The changes were linked to the specific intentions of the participants. The researchers proposed an energetic connection between the quantum vacuum and the physical world, and this connection can be influenced by human intention. They speculated that this mind-matter interaction could play a role in phenomena like spontaneous remissions, the benefits of faith and prayer, and energy healing techniques. How can our intentions affect matter? In quantum physics, infinite possibilities exist as probability waves until they are observed. The act of observation causes these waves to collapse and to define probabilities. This is known as the observer effect. The double slit experiment shows that the behavior of subatomic particles changes based on whether or not they are being observed. Without observation, they exist in an indeterminate state of possibility. The observer effect suggests that consciousness plays an active role in creating our material reality. The act of observation turns possibility into probability and fact. So the coherent intentions of the mind may operate at this level collapsing quantum possibility into the particular reality consistent with that intention. The double slit experiment demonstrates that subatomic particles can behave as particles and waves. When observed, their behavior changes from waves to particles. This is known as the observer effect. Entanglement refers to particles that remain connected regardless of distance. Measuring one entangled particle instantly determines the properties of the other. The observer effect also applies to entangled particles, their properties remain undetermined until measured. The observer effect challenges the notion that science is objective. The beliefs and expectations of scientists shape the outcomes of experiments and the phenomena they find. An example is the expectancy effect, where people perceive what they expect to perceive. Unlike more experienced students, the first-year chemistry student could precipitate sodium crystals quickly. His ignorance and lack of expectation allowed him to succeed where others struggled. This suggests that scientists' beliefs and intentions influence empirical results. The observer effect and related phenomena indicate that consciousness actively shapes the material world, not just passively perceiving it. Mind and matter are deeply interconnected. Sciences can be classified by scale and subject, from physics, fundamental matter, to chemistry, molecules, to biology, life, to psychology, mind. Hard sciences like physics deal with the matter, soft sciences like psychology deal with the mind. Replication of studies is essential to validate results, but many vital studies still need to replicate. This is known as the replication crisis. Factors include small sample sizes, selective reporting of positive results, and the influence of beliefs. Surveys show that over 70% of researchers still need to replicate studies, and over 50% cannot replicate their work. Replication rates are under 1% for physics-slash-chemistry but higher for medicine-slash-psychology. Scientists have beliefs and biases like anyone else. Beliefs can influence results, known as the expectancy effect or observer effect. This has been shown even at the level of atoms in physics. A test of scientists' beliefs, psychologist Daryl Bem did studies showing evidence of precognition. Skeptics reanalyzed the data with a prior belief that precognition was impossible, 
1 in 100 million chance. Even so, the data still showed evidence for precognition. The skeptic's prior belief against it was 100,000 trillion to 1, showing the strength of beliefs. Most scientists do not believe in precognition. BEM's work and the skeptic's reanalysis show how strong beliefs can become among scientists. The skeptics had unwavering faith against precognition, at 100,000 trillion to 1. A survey found that despite evidence that many scientific findings do not replicate, scientists remain confident in science and trust most published papers. Scientists tend to be optimistic about their fields. Science is influenced by belief and subjectivity. Scientists cannot be purely objective. Their beliefs and minds shape their work. Once thought to only operate at the quantum scale, entanglement, and the observer effect have been found at larger scales, including in living systems. Experiments suggest quantum effects may operate in the human sense of smell, in the brain, and at the scale of the planet. The Global Coherence Initiative measures Earth's magnetic field changes and tests whether collective human consciousness can affect the global information field. Some data suggest solar activity and human social events are correlated. Coherent groups of people may positively impact the global field. Random number generators have been used to measure shifts in collective global consciousness during significant world events that engage many people's awareness. The Global Consciousness Project has found correlations between changes in RNG behavior and significant world events. Large-scale experiments like the Global Consciousness Project and Global Coherence Initiative measure collective human consciousness as effects on the material world. They have found correlations between events that happen simultaneously around the world and fluctuations in random event generators. The odds of these correlations happening by chance are minimal. Carl Jung believed in a collective unconscious, a shared spiritual heritage of humanity that shapes our individual experiences. When we achieve personal coherence, we feel better physically and emotionally, our biology changes positively. We also become resonant with global frequencies, contributing to humanity's overall coherence. A story is shared about a man receiving a message from his deceased sister at the same time an earthquake killed the woman he sent money to in Paraguay. This may have been due to quantum entanglement. Entanglement and the observer effect suggest that consciousness shapes reality. Some believe the universe is consciousness, continually creating matter from the mind. Aligning our consciousness with the universe's non-local consciousness allows us to think in new ways and perceive new possibilities. We can shape our reality. The author gives an example of maintaining a reality field and that a publishing project would be successful despite initially receiving rejections. By framing each rejection as the start of a dialogue, the reality field was upheld, and most contributors did agree to participate. In summary, consciousness influences matter both at an individual and collective scale. By achieving personal coherence and aligning with the greater consciousness of the universe, we gain awareness and the ability to shape our reality in positive ways. Here is a summary of the key points from the elements. EEG scans show that training our minds to function coherently produces gamma waves, indicating increased creativity and integration of brain regions. Combined with synchronization with the non-local mind, this gives our intentions focused power. The ability to use intention to affect matter is within the capacity of a trained, coherent mind. Experiments show that consciousness influences the material world each day. An incoherent, Scattered mind is like an incandescent light bulb. A coherent mind is like a laser, able to cut through steel. Consciousness organizes our neural pathways, brings brain waves into coherence, aligns our bodily systems, and allows us to transcend known laws of physics. Cultivating a coherent local mind begins with aligning consciousness with a creative, loving non-local mind. Meditating immediately upon waking, when the brain is alpha, makes this easier. This has profound health and longevity benefits. Synchronicities, meaningful coincidences, become more familiar with a coherent mind attuned to the infinite. This mindset nurtures well-being, creativity, relationships, nature, and global consciousness. On a trip to Malakai, the author and his wife experienced many synchronicities and connections after intending to do so. Their relationship journal contains many such meaningful coincidences. Synchronicities are not mere chance but seem orchestrated. They represent God's way of remaining anonymous pointing to the influence of a higher organizing intelligence. Attuning to this intelligence brings flow, ease, and grace. We can invite synchronicities through intention, openness, and gratitude. Look for and record them to strengthen your connection to the universal flow. They affirm that we are cared for and guided. The phenomenon of synchronicity, or meaningful coincidences, has fascinated human beings for thousands of years. Prominent thinkers like Hippocrates, Marcus Aurelius, 
and Carl Jung wrote about the interconnectedness of all things and the meaningfulness of certain coincidences. Jung studied synchronicity closely and believed that dreams were often harbingers of synchronistic events. He found that dreams frequently contain symbols meaningfully connected to events in a person's waking life. An example is Dr. Larry Burke's research on synchronous dreams about health issues, especially cancer. He has collected many cases of dreams that led directly to medical diagnoses and treatment. The dreams often provide specific information about the location and nature of health problems, even when medical tests have failed to find anything. One case involved a woman named Wanda Birch, who had warning dreams about a tumor in her breast. Although a mammogram was clear, her doctor investigated the area she pointed out based on her dream. He found an extremely aggressive tumor that had not appeared on the mammogram. Another woman had her symptoms dismissed by her doctor but was later diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer, likely too late for effective treatment. Her story inspired Dr. Burke to publicize the importance of paying attention to synchronous health warning dreams. Dreams can also play a role in healing. The story of Mother Mary and the Orbs describes a therapist who dreamed of Mary, the mother of Jesus, descending from heaven and enveloping three cancerous spots on her client Jennifer's ovaries in glowing orbs of light. Although the therapist was skeptical, Jennifer felt sure she had been healed. Subsequent medical tests confirmed that the cancerous spots had disappeared. This dream facilitated miraculous healing. In summary, synchronicity and synchronous dreams point to a deep interconnectedness between mind and matter, consciousness and the physical world. Dreams can provide life-saving information and, sometimes, directly engender healing. Though little understood, synchronous dreams deserve further scientific study. Here is a summary of the key ideas. A woman's cancer disappeared within a week after she had a vivid dream of being cancer-free. Repeat biopsies confirmed that the cancer was gone. She remains cancer-free 15 years later. Dreams and healing are linked because the brain exhibits the same theta brain waves during REM sleep and healing. This suggests that consciousness and matter can interact. Precognition, sensing future events before they happen, has been studied extensively. Daryl Bem conducted rigorous studies showing people can anticipate future events at a rate greater than chance. A meta-analysis of 101 precognition studies found the most reported statistically significant results. Surveys show anomalous experiences like precognition are common, even among atheists, agnostics, and science students. They are not limited to religious or supernaturally inclined people. Even skeptic Michael Shermer described an unexplainable experience with a broken radio that suddenly played music on his wedding day. Synchronicity, or meaningful coincidences, proves that mind and matter are connected. Jung gave the example of seeing a snake swallow a fish just before having the same image carved into a rock. Synchronicities suggest an interconnection between the inner and outer worlds. Synchronicity connects the subjective, immaterial world of mind and energy with the objective, material world of matter and form. However, how this happens has yet to be fully understood. Resonance, where two systems oscillate at the same frequency, may provide a clue. Resonance operates at all scales, from the very small to the infinitely large. It allows communication and synchronization between systems. Resonance may link mind and matter, demonstrating their interconnection. Examples show how pendulums, metronomes, and other oscillating systems can synchronize through resonance. Huygens first described this in 1665. Resonance occurs in all systems, from atomic to galactic scales. It provides a means for the very small and very large to interact. In summary, anomalous experiences like precognition, synchronicity, and dreams manifest in real-world changes suggest that mind and matter are deeply interconnected through processes like resonance. Though we do not fully understand how it works, resonance may allow consciousness and matter to interact across all scales of reality. The Earth has an electromagnetic field that resonates at specific frequencies. These are known as field line resonances and Schumann resonances. The primary Schumann resonance is 7.83 Hz. Harmonics of this frequency occur at 14.3, 20.8, 27.3, and 33.8 Hz. These frequencies correspond to the frequency ranges of human brain waves like theta, alpha, and gamma. The Earth's electromagnetic field and resonances affect human physiology and health. Things like circadian rhythms, emotions, cognition, and physical health are linked to solar and geomagnetic activity. The human brain is sensitive to electromagnetic fields. Changes in the Earth's field can affect brain activity, heart rate, athletic performance, memory, suicide rates, traffic accidents, and more. Researchers propose that quantum coherent frequencies regulate living systems and may represent a universal principle underlying life and consciousness. These frequencies connect living systems across scales, from cells to the planet. 
synchronicities may arise from the inner communication between these various levels of reality, the quantum, the biological, the mental, and the planetary. Though we cannot see these frequencies, they shape minds and matter. In summary, the Earth radiates specific resonant electromagnetic frequencies corresponding to and interacting with human brain waves and physiology. This multidirectional intercommunication between realities quantum, biological, mental, and planetary levels may help explain anomalous events assembling into synchronistic experiences. Fields such as the sphere, psychosphere, and magnetosphere allow information to pass quickly through all levels of reality, including mind and matter. These fields continuously connect everything, even if we do not realize it. This connection is how the unlikely parts of strange events come together as synchronicities. In the 1980s, there was tension between the US and USSR. They had many nuclear weapons and proxy wars. An 18-year-old West German, Matthias Rust, closely followed the failed US-USSR peace talks. He was worried his country would be hit first if there was conflict. Rust took flying lessons and hatched a plan to build a bridge of peace. He flew to Iceland, saw where the peace talks failed, and was motivated to continue. He flew to Finland and filed a flight plan for Sweden but turned off his transponder and entered Soviet airspace. The sophisticated Soviet air defense system did not stop Rust. It was Border Guards Day, so most were on vacation. Miji saw Rust but thought he was a Soviet plane. Commands were cautious after shooting down a civilian plane. They wanted high-level approval to shoot but did not get it. Rust navigated with basic maps and saw Moscow and St. Basil's Cathedral. He landed on the Mosque Varetsky Bridge, where tram cables had been removed. People surrounded him but were friendly. A British doctor filmed the landing. The KGB detained Rust. Rust's flight let Gorbachev oust hardliners. His reform sped up, and the USSR collapsed three years later. Rust's plane is in a German museum. His vision and dramatic act highlighted huge events. Information fields involving millions focused on one person. Many unlikely events stacked up, nudging the future. Significant social-slash-political-slash-military changes often have improbable synchronicities. The world changes fast, only 10% of the 1950s Fortune 500 remain. Even well-organized groups usually need help to stay on top. Need help on synchronized order is standard, from the small to the large scale, examples, schools of fish, flocks of birds, and human body clocks. No leader plans these intricate movements. Organization arises within, synchronized by nature. Spontaneous order is at every level, from elements to cells, fireflies, parts, and traffic to the cosmos. Clock genes in us entrain with day-night cycles, widespread spontaneous self-organization. The article discusses the phenomenon of spontaneous order and self-organization in complex systems. Examples include the circadian cycle, the functioning of cells in our body, the synchronization of groups of people, the dynamics of crowds, and the workings of the stock market. The collapse of the Millennium Bridge in London shortly after its opening in 2000 is used as an example of an emergent, self-organizing process. The slight swaying of the bridge led pedestrians to adjust their walking to match the motion unconsciously, amplifying the swaying in a feedback loop until the bridge became unstable. Installing dampers to reduce the motion solved the problem. The work of Ilya Prigozhin and the Santa Fe Institute studied how order can emerge from chaos in self-organizing systems. These systems exhibit radical novelty, coherence, higher holistic order, and dynamic change and can be perceived. Examples include the evolution of city neighborhoods and the behavior of ant colonies. Carl Jung's concept of synchronicity is related to self-organizing systems. Meaningful coincidences can emerge from the interaction of mind, matter, and fields in ways that appear a causal yet significant. Synchronicities spur psychological and collective evolution. The attacks on the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001, led to many stories of people who were not present that morning for unexpected reasons, including intuition, dreams, delays, and coincidences. The death toll was far lower than initial estimates assumed because many people were absent from work that day. Some examples of celebrities and others narrowly avoided being present when the planes hit. In summary, spontaneously self-organizing systems can generate a higher level order that appears meaningful or directional but arises from the interaction of simple elements. This is evident in nature human social behavior, and experience. Synchronicities are an example of emergent order in mind and meaning. Several people narrowly avoided being at the World Trade Center on September 11th due to a series of coincidences and lucky breaks. Actor Mark Wahlberg and his entourage changed their flight plans at the last minute and chartered a private plane instead of flying on American Airlines Flight 11.
Actor and producer Seth MacFarlane missed Flight 11 because his travel agent gave him the wrong departure time. Actress Julie Stouffer missed the same flight due to fighting with her boyfriend. Michael Lomonaco, the head chef at Windows on the World Restaurant, was delayed going to his office by half an hour to get his glasses repaired, saving his life. Larry Silverstein, the WTC leaseholder, skipped his usual morning appointment to work, but his wife convinced him to go to the doctor instead. Olympic swimmer Ian Thorpe went for a jog that would have ended at the WTC observation deck but turned back to get his camera, avoiding the attack. Jim Pierce was scheduled to attend a meeting on the 105th floor of the South Tower but was moved to a different location due to too many attendees. Eleven of the twelve people in the original meeting room died. Lara Lundstrom was rollerblading in Lower Manhattan and stopped to talk to actress Gwyneth Paltrow, causing her to miss her train to the WTC and save her life. These stories show how small coincidences can significantly impact our lives, especially during events like 9-11. Synchronicity, meaningful coincidences, often arise during these events. Synchronicity has scientific explanations based on universal fields that connect all matter and energy. Our brains act as transducers, tuning into and interacting with these fields. In altered states of consciousness like dreams or meditation, we can access information from these fields that extend far beyond our physical senses. There is no evidence that the mind is solely the product of the physical brain. Experiences like near-death experiences and out-of-body experiences provide evidence of consciousness operating independently of the brain, able to obtain information from far away. The brain may act as a filter, limiting our infinite consciousness to a manageable human experience. Studies of near-death experiences in blind people provide compelling evidence of consciousness beyond the body. Blind people with NDEs have described visual details they had never seen like the patterns on the rings they wore. One blind woman, Vicky Umapeg, described her experience of seeing for the first time during her NDE in vivid detail. Her experience suggests that the mind is not dependent on the brain or the body to function or to enable our perception and cognition. The Tibetan Book of the Dead, written centuries ago, described states of non-local consciousness where one could perceive beyond the senses. In the Bardo state between life and death, one can travel instantly and perceive non-locally. Many philosophical and spiritual traditions believe in a universal consciousness that we each reflect in our minds. Shamans were believed to travel between local and non-local awareness. For most of human history, altered states of consciousness were considered ordinary and holy people access non-local wisdom. Only recently have these states been seen as paranormal. Near-death experiences and out-of-body experiences can be transformative. A study found that AIDS patients with a loving view of God slash the universe live longer. Crises can lead to spiritual breakthroughs. The mind is not in the brain, the brain is like a transducer, receiver, or screen for the mind. Studies show consciousness is not located in the brain. Mind and consciousness are independent of the brain. In ordinary states, we identify with our local, physical reality. In anomalous states like dreams or meditation, we lose identification with our bodies and sense of local self. We can access distant parts of the universe. Some anomalous states are transcendent like feeling one with nature. In mystical states, we dissolve into oneness. The brain translates between local and non-local reality. It anchors us in the physical world and connects us to the universal mind. External stimuli can shock us from non-local states into waking reality and vice versa. We can choose what frequency or signal to tune our mind, whether fear or love. We can cultivate transcendent states through meditation rather than leaving them to chance. We can change the channel to more uplifting frequencies. In the example dream, the speaker tells the audience they can access the happy universe. The price of admission is surrendering their suffering. They must let go of ego and negativity to enter. To enter a place of no suffering, you must give up all your suffering. You cannot take loved ones in with you, they have to choose to give up their suffering too. The author had a dream about this and woke up with the images vivid in their mind. The author prayed to enter a meditative state the previous New Year's. Within weeks, this started happening. Two months later, while struggling with whether or not to write a book on mind-matter connections, the author found a $10 bill on the beach. They saw this as a sign from the universe to proceed with the project. Many synchronicities occurred while writing the book, including calls or messages from friends with information that filled gaps in chapters at the perfect time. The author believes we can choose to attune our minds to fields of love, peace, and joy instead of fear and lack. When we do so, we connect synchronistically with our highest destiny. Studies show that people in spiritual or elevated states have different brain wave patterns and neural connections. Deliberately creating these states can build new connections and change the brain.
a study found that people who committed to generous behavior had the most significant changes in happiness-related brain regions, even before the act. The intent was enough to change the brain. We are faced with choices each moment about where to direct our awareness. Consistently focusing on the eternal now and universal mind can shape the brain to synchronize with these. We are spiritual beings with material bodies, and orienting our consciousness shapes the matter we create with our minds. Synchronicity can be cultivated through consistent focus and practice. It is not purely random. By observing synchronicities when they happen and focusing on them, we become more attuned to them, and they happen more often. This is using the observer effect. Cultivating synchronicity is a gradual process of nudging reality, not instantly manifesting things. It involves taking practical steps while also maintaining focus and intent. Synchronicity is cultivated through consistently held thoughts and beliefs, which shape our reality over time by repeating neural pathways. Our beliefs and expectations tend to become self-fulfilling prophecies. While struggling in others, we tend to have mastery in one or a few life areas, work, love, money, health, spirituality. The areas we have mastered intend to come effortlessly. There are collective thought fields in the collective unconscious that shape our behavior, perceptions, and experiences. When we participate in a thought field, we see the world through the lens of that field. Thought fields can be shared among groups, reinforcing specific patterns, habits, beliefs, and behaviors. They tend to suck us in when we are exposed to them. Fearful thought fields, in particular, perpetuate fear and seek out fearful stimuli. In summary, synchronicity in our experiences are shaped by the thoughts beliefs, and fields of consciousness we habituate and expose ourselves to by focusing on and cultivating positive, life-affirming thought patterns and synchronistic experiences, we can gradually shift our experience of reality. However, we must also be aware of more negative thought fields and avoid habituating those patterns. Consistent practice and patience are essential. Here is a summary of the key points from the passage. Our thoughts are profoundly creative and can generate matter, for better or worse. We can condition our material world by the energy of the thought fields we choose to activate. It is essential to attune your mind to the highest and most favorable state, especially first thing in the morning. Doing so will generate synchronicity and positive changes in your life. Synchronicity represents the coordination of all life, from the distant reaches of space to our most intimate thoughts. Our choices create resonance patterns that extend infinitely. Understanding the power of thought empowers us to use our minds deliberately and attune to fields of love, kindness, and creativity. A life lived synchrony with the universe, attuned to the music of the spheres, is well lived. Emergence, the spontaneous arising of order, permeates life at all levels, from traffic patterns to insect colonies to river flow. Notice emergence happening around you. Write down synchronous events from your own life and experiences of emergence you have witnessed recently. Practice eco-meditation to align your life with synchronicity. The key takeaway is that our thoughts have tremendous power to shape our reality and we must learn to use them consciously and for the highest good. Attuning to positive thought fields, noticing emergence and synchronicity, and anchoring our minds in a state of positivity, love, and creativity allows us to tap into the infinite field of potential and call the greater good into our lives. John Muir was an influential naturalist who helped establish Yosemite National Park. He brought the area to the attention of President Theodore Roosevelt, who visited Muir in Yosemite Valley in 1903. Muir dedicated his life to connecting with nature. Muirwood's National Monument was established in 1908 to protect coast redwood forests. The redwood trees are the tallest on earth, some over 100 meters tall. Some trees are over 2,000 years old, dating to the time of Jesus. The species has existed for over 200 million years. The giant redwoods have a powerful presence. Conservationists, William and Elizabeth Kent purchased the land that became Muirwood's National Monument in 1905 to protect the redwoods from logging. William Kent said saving the trees would be worthwhile despite the financial risk. In 1945, the United Nations Charter was drafted in Muirwood's Cathedral Grove to honor President Franklin Roosevelt after he died. About a million people visit Muirwoods each year. The author and his wife accidentally drove past Muirwoods on Memorial Day weekend but decided to go early the next morning. They could enjoy walking meditation through Cathedral Grove in solitude before the crowds arrived. They felt profoundly connected to nature during their visit. Aligning with the universal flow provides access to synchrony, grace, beauty, and wisdom. By merging with the non-local mind, our mind is no longer separate or fragmented. We gain access to universal consciousness, wisdom, power, intelligence, and love. We experience the wisdom, peace, and love of the universe. 
This state is described by mystics and experienced during peak performance or creative work. It is the natural state of children playing. It is meant to be our normal state. We can cultivate this state through practices that reconnect us with the universe. We can release suffering and rediscover joy in play. We should start and end each day by aligning with the highest possible frequency and energy field we know. This provides a physical sensation of shifting to an altered state and accessing the non-local universal field. Our thoughts, actions, aspirations, expectations, assumptions, and worldview change from this state. Our sense of self shifts to perceiving oneness with the universe. We feel equanimity, power, peace, joy, love, and exuberance. We gain a creative, visionary perspective from the universal mind. When aligned with the universe, our mind synchronizes with all other minds also aligned with the universe. We love and bless those not yet aligned, and our attunement invites their attunement. We cannot help others by moving out of attunement ourselves. We live in a state of non-attunement, and the only way to help others is by being fully attuned to the universal self. By doing so, we become an invitation for others to join in attunement. We do not need to persuade or induce them. They will join when ready. Let them be, there are many others ready to join in attunement. The universe wants us to find and remain in attunement, calibrating to the universal field each day. This means releasing the illusion of being a struggling local entity and embracing oneness with all. Choosing alignment or non-alignment is the most crucial choice we make. As we choose alignment, it becomes a way of life, changing our reality. The local mind creates one reality, universal mind another. Universal mind shifts our body, thoughts, and material reality. We are creating the world around us with our thoughts now and always. We are artists painting existence with our thoughts. Our visions translate to material form. We choose our reality by our thoughts, consciously or not. For generations, we have created survival, fear, anger, war, etc. But now we are ready for a new experience. We are beginning to realize we can choose a new world and select thoughts, feelings, and beliefs to create it. As new creators, our first steps are tentative, but we will gain confidence and expand our circle of influence. We have only just begun to understand our potential. We have lived in suffering, believing it was an objective reality. Now we know our thoughts create reality. We understand our power over the microscopic and macroscopic. Our thoughts shape our cells and physiology and combine to shape history. As conscious creators, when survival needs to push negative thoughts, we can choose not to think about them. This joins us with others making similar choices, shifting society. Choosing a positive thought instead shifts reality for all. We add to kindness and compassion, transforming history. While misery and ignorance ran the show for millennia, today, we understand our power and make different choices. We shape our reality and the planets. We shine light into old conditioned thinking, like a toddler's first steps. Our thoughts and intentions have the power to shape reality. By cultivating positive thoughts, we can create positive changes in the world. Our bodies produce feel-good chemicals and hormones when we think positive and hopeful thoughts. This positively reinforces our desire to continue having uplifting thoughts. As more people commit to positive thinking, it creates an irresistible field of love. This can lead to a new shared reality where people act with more kindness, compassion, and altruism. Children born into this new shared reality of love will experience the world differently. They will grow up surrounded by love and will spread more love and joy as a result. This can create a positive feedback loop leading to a world with less war, hunger, and poverty. The examples and studies show that thoughts and consciousness can directly impact living systems and the material world. This includes effects on human and plant cellular growth and health, the chemical structure of water, and more. A new science is emerging showing that our thoughts are not confined to our brains. The mind can extend into the physical world through energy and information. By harnessing the power of thought, we have the potential to heal ourselves and the planet. We can co-create a better future together through shared intention and meditation. Our thoughts and vision of a positive world can become a reality. Here is a summary of the history of the magnetic compass. The magnetic compass was first invented in China between the 2nd century BC and the 1st century AD. It was used for divination and geomancy. The compass spread to the Middle East and Europe between the 12th and 15th centuries. European sailors used it for long-distance ocean voyages, enabling the age of discovery. In the 19th century, the compass was further developed to increase its accuracy and usefulness. Sir William Thomson invented mirror galvanometer compasses in the 1870s. Germans Carl Friedrich Gauss, Carl August von Steinheil, and others improved the compass design and developed better magnets. Modern compasses are still widely used for navigation, orienteering, 
and other purposes. Digital components have enhanced them but still rely on the same magnetic principles developed centuries ago. The history of the compass illustrates how a simple invention can have an enormous impact, enabling discoveries and connections between societies. The compass proved revolutionary for navigation, transportation, trade, exploration, and many centuries. Book link, click here.